Obviously, I'm a huge fan of JavaScript. Sadly, it's not a perfect language. I'm sure there are plenty of other people who've told you all about flaws in JavaScript and how doomed the language is. I don't think the doomerism is necessary, but I do think there are some flaws that are worth talking about. I wanna focus on one in particular today and how other languages solve this problem. The problem is imports. Well, I'm sure your immediate thought is, wait, what? Imports in JavaScript are fine. Well. They kind of are, but if you play to other languages, you know there are things they can do better. Make sure you watch to the end if you wanna see how other languages solve these problems. We're gonna start with a TypeScript example. Let's say we're importing something for React, like we want use state. The most common way we do this is import React from React, and then we would call react.useState. Probably shouldn't have said this is the most common because we don't do this too often anymore. This used to be how we would do imports in a lot of projects, or even worse, we would use require, which is utter chaos. But if you wanted to use use state, is something like this. And now you don't need to call React when you're calling the use state. The problem here isn't the code or the syntax directly. It's actually the experience you have as a developer when you're typing this. Because your editor, your tools, your language server can't know what you're importing from when you start typing this. So if I was just typing, import, use, this can't autocomplete. It has no knowledge of what's going on. So I have to correctly guess what I'm trying to import before I can finish typing it. So if I misspell this, like use stats from React, this is the point where I would get an error. I type all of that, do this, do it wrong, and then see I'm getting an error and then be like, what the hell's going on? Delete it. And maybe my editor's smart enough to help me autocomplete from here now that it has the context at the end. The solution for this is actually pretty simple and a lot of other languages have figured it out. Solution is flip the order from React import use state. Sadly, this is not the syntax in JavaScript. The import syntax was decided on by ECMA a long time ago. It's a bit too late to change it, but man, our tools would have been much, much easier to use if the language was designed in a way to assist our tools in understanding what we're trying to do without having an order that determines where we're importing from first and then what we're importing second. We might make the code marginally more readable. We've also made our lives much harder because autocomplete can no longer carry us. I have strong feelings about this because I've used other languages that do it right. And as soon as I came to JavaScript and realized they were doing it wrong, it was really frustrating for me. I actually collected a bunch of different languages to show how they're doing these things. First example I wanna give is Elixir, because I'm a huge Elixir fanboy. In Elixir, you import from the thing. This says only take the duplicate and the version of it that takes two arguments. This is super, super convenient. It lets you specify trivially what you're trying to import and your IDE and your tools can auto-complete it as you go along. You'll see that, especially for module-based languages, this pattern is really common, where you have a bunch of sub-modules defined on a higher set of modules and you can import small parts from it. So in C Sharp, we have using system.io. So this is a sub-module IO on the big module system. Pretty simple, obvious, this will clearly autocomplete because it's pulling off of the end there. You wouldn't be able to import multiple things off this. Like let's say you wanted system IO and system dot utils. You'd have to make these separate. And then for Java, we have everyone's favorite import package.class.name. Very similar to C sharp syntax. This kind of became the norm for a while. But there are other languages that do this well too like Python, which is literally what I was proposing just there with the JavaScript syntax. From X, import Y. This just makes sense. And as much as I hate writing Python, it's nice they got this type of thing right. It's a big part of why Python is a pleasant experience to write, which was the ultimate goal of the language, make something as fun to write as possible. Haskell does not have that goal, but they still got this right. Import example, and then in parentheses, the thing you want to import. And as our kind contributor noted here, you can skip the parentheses and import everything from it directly. Rust is a bit of a nested mess. And I saw a lot of people saying in chat that they think imports in Rust are kind of annoying. At the very least, you're able to use the double colon syntax to select specific things within a crate. And then you can use these brackets to select a pile of things from within one of these. Very convenient. Although, yeah, the syntax is a bit weird. I hate these and I'm Sure, there's other catches I'm not familiar with. Supposedly, they also support wildcards for imports, which is a bit scary. And suddenly, those slow compile times are making much more sense. And I guess PHP is trending right now. So I gave a PHP example. Use my full class name as another. So you say the thing you want to import, and then you bind it to something else, and you're done. I'm sad there are so many other languages that do this right, and JavaScript still does it like JavaScript. We could have had better. And I hope for future proposals for features that JavaScript is learning from other languages that we're a little bit better about doing things, not just to make the code look really good, but to make the editor experience as pleasant as possible. Because code isn't just read and approved, it's also written and interacted with. And thinking about what your editor experience is like is really important as you design a language. I sincerely hope that the contributors and the ECMAScript maintainers who make these types of decisions are more thoughtful in the future about how these things behave in your editor so that we can continue making JavaScript 
the best possible experience for all the developers who use it. Let me know what you thought about this video, one that I've been thinking about for a while, and I know it's a bit short, but I think the information is useful. If you want to hear a bit more about features that are coming to JavaScript that I'm excited about that hopefully we'll get right, I'll put a video in the corner here all about one of those. Thank you guys as always. Appreciate y'all. Peace nerds.